All right. Hello, today is June 29th, and I have my usual uh, webinar on Thursday night, and um, today I will be speaking for myself, for a change. And um, I have with me Jan and Alicia. Let me see who else. And Anya. Hey, everybody. The topic today is um, actually my favorite. I wrote a book on, on that. And the topic is what to do after the big change, after the big event. So the first question is uh, what what is the big event which is going to happen? And that we don't know. We know that ascension is coming. And some people expect it like next week, some expect it next month, some expect it this year, and some expect it like... Um, later and I keep bugging the extraterrestrials and aliens and angels asking them when do you expect the transition to the fourth dimension for density and uh, their prediction is usually about 200 years about five generations they I thought say, it was supposed to happen after the financial collapse in 2027 <laughs> after that <laughs> um, right yeah, I guess my take on that, that we already are in a process and now is the most important time. Like now the, the first big, big, big event, the first event that starts the, the downfall. And um, after that, uh, what happens on that, on that first big event, then that would define the rest of the, of the journey, the rest of the shock waves. Uh, it will kind of put the signature on that. So, uh, do we experience uh, higher dimensional energies? It's really hard to tell for, from personal experience because maybe it's just me, right? I, I, I experience some higher dimensional energies because I'm working on my meditations, on my channelings, on my Reiki, on my... Um, intuition and psychic abilities so of course i'm kind of moving there and uh, and i feel more and more of that like for but you know it, it's never enough right like um i was very excited to go to their close encounters type 5 uh, star watch meditation where you go under the stars meditate at night you know in uh, in the desert it's very clear sky, lots of stars. And the, 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 the sky looks really actually cloudy because there is so much, like Milky Way is one huge cloud that splits in the middle. So I thought these are clouds, but then I don't know, people who know explain, it's just that's how many stars are there. It's very clear sky, you just see too much. It, it kind of becomes blurry, especially at night become, become, because you get tired and everything is like little fuzzy, but anyway, we were able to meditate and cause or invite the blinking of the star. So the star would flash at us on invitation. And in certain area of the sky, they would flash repeatedly and the whole group would, would notice. And that happened in two different nights. So I'm, I have really good confirmations that, yes, this is real. The stars flash at us. And it's not helicopters, airplanes, satellites, because... They sort of communicate, you, you shine the laser and they kind of flash in response. So that was great. Like a medium sized star, they just do one single flash and then nearby single another flash. Um, on the other hand, I was thinking I'm ready, but during that first experience, I felt really sick when the whole group kind of shifted to higher dimension and was communicating with the aliens. I, was, I felt really bad. I felt tired, dizzy, unhappy. So that's higher dimensional energy wasn't good for me. I wasn't ready for it. So, and similar things happen when I go to the groups of different people. Some people are much higher dimensional than I. They are like very purified, very thinking, very highly in high vibrational space about high vibrational ideas. And habitually i'm trying to bring them down and i feel that they resist they don't want to come down to my level i'm at my five four point seven level like here and they may be here and they don't want to 
for me to grab them down and bring them down. Uh, luckily, Jim is kind of capable of functioning on different levels simultaneously, so he is easily coming. If he, if I want him down, he comes down. So who are these people in higher dimensional? Usually these would be uh, Kundalini Reiki people. No, Kundalini Yoga, I'm sorry. Kundalini Yoga people, they just live in purified space. They isolate themselves with filters from outside the world and exist in that higher dimensional space. And for me, it's uncomfortable. I just feel drained there and bored, actually. Not because it, they are boring for me, but just because I don't feel what they feel. It's, it's just too high for me. I, I can't... Cannot, I don't have the muscles to navigate in that dimension yet. So, yes, people are shifting, but my another conclusion is that they are shifting possibly for many years. I think in the uh, 60s they, sh they shifted really up. Like with LSD and uh, mushrooms and other drugs, they shifted really up and the whole dimension was ready then, but now they it looks like they like we made ups and downs, waves of ups and downs, and I don't know if this wave is any bigger than the wave in the 60s. So there is no objective measure how ready are the people. Like, there were, in the 60s there were many people who believed in aliens, and there was tons of movies about the aliens, so they released tons of secrets about the aliens in the movies even then, so I guess we are going in waves, and now there is another wave and hopefully in this way we'll make it to transition through a, how do you call it, the, a breaking point where the humanity will finally awaken collectively. Right now it goes up and down, so basically we believe, we speak to others, others say maybe, but then everything comes back down, like uh, negative events like 9-11 kind of drag the whole humanity down and there is a lot of ways to distract the humanity from awakening. So, um, mass media is, and po politics and economy are doing a really great job distracting everybody from awakening. And even me, right? Even me. So, I don't know how fast are we awakening and um, is there an objective measure? That illusion of our collective reality. Are we really making it? Are we really moving there? But I, I hope we do. I I kind of do a dual, yeah, dualistic split, split personality work. In one side of me, I make sure I believe we are making it and do all preparation steps to make it. And another side of personality that is old me which says, you know, in case we, they, we don't make it, I still have some grounding in the in this reality and I'll be okay. I can still do my daily duties and um, live in the old style of reality. And this is, of course, is contradictory, inefficient, and um, produces a lot of anxiety and all other symptoms of being uh, split and fragmented. But I think I'm just one of many light workers who do that. Like everybody, like lot, lots of light workers would 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 be in the same sort of uh, predicament. They would um, do a lot of light worker work, but if you're late to the appointment, they forget that there is no time. They will be really upset that you're late for the appointment, right? So, um, so I guess that's where we are. Um, I. Um, I say that yes, no, even though there is no objective measure that we really are making it into higher dimension. I don't think there is too much evidence. David Wilcock, Wilcock in his book Ascension Mysteries, David, David Wilcock Ascension Mysteries, did a great review of our ascension, proofs of our ascension. Uh, his new book available on Amazon, I really like it. And uh, the previous one um, also did a lot of checking, are we really making it? Other other objective measures of 
of transformation of solar system and the previous book was called uh, the source field investigations by david wilcock i really like it too is david wilcox is he the reincarnation of edgar casey uh all this discussion about who is it yes all this discussion is always questionable i mean how do you prove but yeah because but his photograph was... is pretty convincingly similar um Casey was doing a lot of work in, in his sleep. He was a sleeping prophet. And David, David Wilcock is also doing that kind of channeling. I, um, I had a, an honor to hug him after his lecture. And this hug was completely extraterrestrial. He was so, uh, so much out there. His it's energy that, was... That, it, well, I thought very interesting because it was just not too long ago, a couple of months ago, uh -huh. I was part, I took part in a channeling session where a channel was channeling Edgar Casey, And uh, one of the questions came up and we hit the answer was that he, he, he is fractal and is reincarnated here on earth. And all he would say is that his reincarnation his name is David and wouldn't give his last name for protection, you know, for privacy reasons. And then just later that week, I was in a bookstore and I happened to see a book saying, you know, the reincarnation of Edgar Casey by David Wilcox. <laughs> <laughs> he is not Wilcox. He is Wilcock. Not oh, Wilcox. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so super. now you just brought that, that up. Um, so, and so all, that just interesting yeah. that, that all of a sudden this just comes up at a random in different places. Um, it is not that fixed, actually. To my understanding, you can choose, pick and choose your past lives. If somebody says to you, that was your past life, and uh, you can choose to believe in it or forget about it. Like, okay. I had, you know, I asked that question many times, and some of the past lives resonated with me really well. And I connected to them. And when you connect to them in your mind, you kind of link to that knowledge and that vibration and becomes yours. And when you forget about it, it just disappears. So if it excites David Wilcock, then it becomes his. That's, that's my point. And the same thing with uh, alien lineage. You can say to anyone that your DNA is alien. And because it's the whole reality here is, here is an illusion. If somebody is, takes it seriously, resonates with the idea, oh, gosh, my DNA is alien, then you build sort of a, a reality, illusionary reality you build where, where it is true, and then you get lots of evidence in that. If you ignore it, you, you kind of remain the earth human. So I think it's, it's, it's very much... As people say, if you resonate with it in your heart, that's it's true. Basically, if you decide it's if it excites you, then it's true. Um, but what I'm saying, he is very energetic, and his books are great. His speeches are full of energy. Uh, there is some disconnect with the reality in his books, of course, and his speeches. He is like tends to overstate everything like four times at least. But uh, on the other hand, uh, he is closest to my understanding how things are. So his interest is very close to my interest in science and then in, uh, in ascension. So I just, every time I read his book, I discover that he was there a few years before me. So I seem to be like uh, connected to his energy. And several years after he writes the book without reading, I sort of become interested in what he's interested in. That's interesting. So... Uh, ascension. I lived, so my, my main unique, Wilcock didn't live in Soviet Union, he, but he is connected to a lot of Russian scientists. I lived in Soviet Union when it fell apart in 90s. And there was a feeling of, um, of before it fell apart, before 1986, before the Chernobyl, the first big blow was Chernobyl. Uh, before Chernobyl, there was a feeling, we didn't believe it will fall apart, but there was a feeling that things don't go right, that, feel, that the system is ready to transform. There was that sensation that the whole system is 
shaken before before falling apart. And um, some of these um, si signs of, of instability are here in uh, in the world now, in the, in the Western world and everywhere, and in China. So it looks like this social, economic, political system of Earth is is ready to be transformed and it will fall apart. And when it happens, I don't know. But that that's going to be the first blow. And obviously, there will be some initial initial events that will leave, lead to to the falling of the system. Like Soviet Union didn't fall in one year. It took Chernobyl was 86, and Soviet Union essentially, effectively, I think, was disintegrated in 92, 93. So it took six, seven years. And formal was was for, formal formalities weren't that essential as actually economic and social changes. So so it took about ten years for that for that system to fall apart. So uh, I'm waiting, expecting some some first blows, which will then cause a transition for for maybe ten years of things falling apart. And. Uh, with Soviet system, the system which came after it was basically, I guess, similar to Polish and Czech and um, Bulgarian systems, and um, where Soviet countries would um, basically convert to more like more more or less free market economy and um, kind of become more more like uh, the West, West Westernized. So that happened to the Soviet Union, and uh, it was sort of kind of obvious how 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 it was going to go. That was a, it, that was from my from my memory. I guess I'm my question. I mean, that was a very difficult transition when the collapse happened, and then the economy, of course, had to shift, and there was a huge economic crisis for how many years? You know, uh, because the inflation was so high and you know, every all those all the the former Soviet Union was just you know in total financial chaos. I don't after think the, the crisis. Ever, How long did that last? I don't think the crisis ever ended, but uh, the main bottom of the crisis was about three years, I guess. Okay. Like when there is like, um, and it also it wasn't lo lo localized in. It was like a way which started in Moscow and then spread outside, and then Moscow recovered. But the outside, the the the, the province outside was still in in trouble, and now it's kind of more more or less stabilized. I mean, it's still in crisis, but it's 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 in a different stage of it. So. Um, so that was one of the lessons. It doesn't happen at once, and it doesn't uh, happen at all places at once. It goes like in pockets, and uh, even within the same Moscow, it was like pockets of relative uh, uh, normality and relative and complete abnormality, complete uh, disaster. So that's one of the lessons. It, it's it's not although now the world is much more synchronized and universal, but still there will be lots of pockets. Well, plus also when it recovered, I mean, part of the re within the recovery, a whole new system of corruption developed as well, which is part of the continuing cause of the problems today. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the main problem. That in mo now everybody, many people believe that there was evil intentioned, uh, evil intentioned conspiracy, and you know, different people blame it on different. Uh, uh, groups, but there was sort of conspiracy against it. Now there is like the same conspiracy in Ukraine and and so on. So uh, the the transition of the Western world, you know, Russia had had sort of a Western world as an example where many of us were looking at prosperity of the Western world, and for us the, it was. Japan, example of Japan and South Korea was the most exemplary that when the countries were prevented from uh, developing their uh, military economy and were 
forcefully tra transform into Western economy. And, uh, and that really helped their economy, right? So Japan, they weren't allowed to have the army and they, they were under American, mostly American influence. So America kind of brought in the, uh, the American rules of doing the economy and that really helped and now Japan is one of the strongest economies. Same with Germany, when Germany was split into two parts, one was right. Soviet and one was Western. Sure. So Soviet part was uh, well, I mean, very imaginative. You can just imagine how much stronger an economy would be if you didn't have military to support. <laughs> uh huh. I mean, I think that in and, in and of itself uh, goes a long way to stabilizing and in, and shoring up a, a very solid economy. Is not having to pay for a military, which uh -huh. is you know our biggest expense. Uh huh. So. Um, and Russia for us was uh, was uh, a big illustration that you know there are clear advantages for Western type of free market, and then when we saw the negative side of it, we were really disappointed. Like we didn't see much help from the West. We expected lots more advice, like like really like people needed advice and they didn't come. We didn't know what to do. They still nobody knows what to do this yet, but we hope that you guys. Like the Westerners know know how it is set up and would at least give us free advice for that, but it didn't happen. So now what I'm saying is, hey Eva, uh, with their Western crisis, uh, there is no no clear um, plan what to do. Like like we had an example of the West. Now for the West, there is no example further of some other system other than the alien one so now the the world world economy would have to ask aliens to give us advice of how to reform right uh in russia there was um but then it's also hard to get advice and have the advice um heated to if there's a lot of corruption involved I mean that just makes all the advice worthless. Right, right. And so um, that could that, I could see that being a potential for the U.S. especially as well. Is absolutely. you know anytime there's going to be a new economy structure, there's going to be the insiders who are going to you know mm -hmm. it's going to turn get, there's going to be the corruption in it. Yes. Um, yeah, that's that's the key. Um, in any especially, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, especially with the you know folks like with the Illuminati. <laughs> Right. In any revolution, we like study Russian revolution, which first was kind of successful and then went sour. And then we looked at the French revolution, which was successful and then really sour. And, um, and lots of other transformations where people would, would, have, good idea, would have good ideas, would bring, bring up these ideas, and then the whole system would be hijacked by negatives. So that is kind of classics in, uh, in in earth history and that's why people really don't like any change or people especially don't like fast changes when the transformation can be hijacked by negatives and you know on one hand I, I'm looking forward for ascension and looking forward for fixing the problems but on the other hand if it goes the usual way it's it's better to have it as it is now than, than to be hijacked by negatives because uh, people come to power who really don't care about the future or others. They are so messed up. They just care of immediate their interest, and that's that's about it. And uh, also, like there is a big disappointment about the people. Like in Russia, where, uh, before the the shift, before the shift in eighties, we had basically visible was best part of elite. Uh, there's an elite or a light, elite, I guess. Uh, like most talented cultural leaders or science leaders or economy leaders were on the surface, they were writing the newspapers, everything was kind of filtered. And then when uh, we actually met our average people, it was a complete disaster. Like when people actually, you know, got the weapons and went on the streets, 
then we realize what 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 is really Russia, the the the, the real population of Russia and, and the Moscow and the country and uh, and everybody was scared, right? So you know, for me it was just that awakening that forced me to move to to United States. So and the same thing with 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 Trump when people realized. Uh, who is electing and what are their motivations? It was also a big awakening. Until they chose to vote, it wasn't that clear how how backward the whole society is. Um, so um, my hope is that um, telepathy is answer. Like if you want fantastic science fiction, uh, if you want science fiction economy, we need science fiction tools to to get to it to uncover motivation motivation i didn't mean motivation i meant just i mean the leadership is the key and deception is the main problem right but i mean that's what the, i know with the motivation so that with the telepathy i'm asking if this is what you meant that you understand someone's motivation you know there's it's transparent in the ah, sense yeah, that no yeah. one can lie right Okay. So, so basically, we need some some psychics and telepaths in the future. Uh, possibly not high percent, but at least the ones which can see through their motivation, yeah, and see through the integrity of the person. Yeah, at least see their auras. <laughs> yeah, see the auras, and um, of course, it's kind of <laughs> hard to enforce because in, I guess you know. Another conclusion is that it's not one change, like old government is changed for a new government, and that's about it. It's it's waves of different governments and um, parties and, how do you call it, social layers. So I guess it would be multiple stages as well. But ultimately, I hope to see that um, it all becomes more transparent more transparent like because i mean the key for their key trouble in soviet union which started at the fall was first it was chernobyl and chernobyl was completely hidden from the public and it was became just laughable you know how government tries to hide something that big right so people lost the trust in government when they saw that much of deception and uh, and a reaction to that was we want transparency and uh, transparency is what brought their system down when the system became transparent there was basically waves of disclosure in the system waves and these few waves destroyed the system people just completely lost trust and interest in it so we are calling for disclosure now but uh, we have to <laughs> I guess I have to warn everybody the disclosure will cause the fall of the system. It's 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 hard to transform something while it's working. When when you try to transform a, a giant which is unstable, the transformation on my experience leads to the fall of the giant. Um, I have a question, Max. Yes. Uh -huh. um, has as far as like the the event and disclosure, has anything been said recently about the um, the large chunk of Antarctica that is about to break off, and how that would affect the possibilities of of, of disclosure or the rise of the um, the oceans? And has anything been said about that at all? I uh, noticed it, but I didn't do any research on that. So I, I'm, okay. I'm kind of behind. I, I when when I need the news, I usually go to channelers and to um, some old old texts and books. So I I don't really follow the news that well. I'm sorry, I didn't know about. I haven't heard anything about Antarctica actually breaking off and sea level rise associated with that. However, I have heard, you know, uh, not too long ago about how it's. We're, it's past the tipping point in it, and Antarctica is going to melt, and it's melting 50 times faster than they thought it was going to be. Um, but so there's now concern that Antarctica is going to break off? Well, from my understanding, um, and I've, I've looked at several sources, and even, I want to say like 
Corey Good and now don't like quote me on this. Corey Good and the, and the the gentleman we were just talking about, the Casey uh, reincarnation. Uh, Wilcock, David Wilcock. Okay, thank you. I think I, I it was them that I had just also watched a program on where he mentions it, but basically there was a um, no, there, there's a big um, crack that, and this is kind of how I felt about it, like with with the microwave stuff that happened, that um, it it severed the crack and widened it even more to make it fall. Yeah, but that's I, my opinion. I, I had the same same perception that it was the same same event described. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if, if it's a crack and it breaks off, does that mean that it still floats and we're just waiting for it's, it to melt before oh, sea level rise, right? Right. It's massive. What did they say? It's bigger than <sighs> like I don't Texas want to or something. <laughs> it's yeah, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. Um and it would like even change, you know, like the maps and everything. It, it would the the maps would have to be redrawn. Well, and that section is all ice because I mean a lot of Antarctica is also land under ice so is it all ice that has the crack that would actually break off and float from my understanding yes it was ice okay. did you max do you have anything to say about i just googled there is tons of news on that from today yep yeah and we've been watching okay. like um we did like two nights in a row we've been going through uh various youtube um programs to see what everybody has to say about it and um it's quite interesting. So I, I just, I didn't know if anything, uh, if it had been talked about that, that you were aware of. Interesting. I, the, my information I just got was from the Science Channel. Because, you <laughs> so know, that, um, Casey, Casey, when he was um, in like the 20s when he was around, he even said that some for like the big events, some of the, the first things that are going to happen is you're going to actually end up losing um, parts of California and parts of New York. Right. And so here I'm thinking, I'm thinking, well, you know, the big microwave thing kind of expanded everything and now it's going in and now it's going to, and this is going to help with the rise of the, the water. Let me, part of, also with the ascension or this event, it was my understanding uh, that whatever this event took place, that there were going to be a large percentage of the population that this, that weren't going to simply make it, meaning they weren't going to survive. Is that incorrect? Um, I, I mean, that's how I, any any sort of big event, like, you know, when, when they talk about, we're in like, is it the fifth world now, Max, or the sixth, like the Mayans talk about the different worlds? Are you familiar with this at all? Um, they, um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, in my in my idea of how, how it all happens, um, yeah, there has to be like a mass extinction. And, and okay, because I know the, the other parts that I hear talked about separately, which I think would go, you know, with the, with the global changes that are happening and specifically with the uh, polarity reversal of the Earth's magnetic fields um, would well, definitely cause... Yeah, which is already happening in 70,000 years over two from happening. And other information that I've learned from over the years of reading material that there, you know, obviously the, the, the magnetic field protects us from the radiation. And in other channeled material that I've read over the years, that whenever this event happens or this ascension happens, that humans are going to have to, the you know, people who are going to survive are they're going to be the people who have a high tolerance to radiation or who tolerate radiation. And so I just made that leap, you know, polar, the polarity reversal and, Super. you know, all right, let, let me grab that. The, let me grab the microphone. Sorry. Uh, no, no, it's all good. Thank you for reminding that things, I, I started scratching myself. Ah, I'm neurotic now. All right, let's, uh, let's do a chunk. Uh, Did I frustrate you? Frustrate you? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Let's do a chant. I will. I invite um, angelic help, and I invite everybody to breathe deeply and do a little meditation. It's all good. Thank you for contributing. You are doing good. Uh, you didn't 
you weren't completely upset. You were analyzing things, but. Oh yeah, no, I'm not a, like, that's not how I roll. I'm calm. It's all good. We'll make it through. It'll be awesome. All right. So yes, exactly. Uh, it's a big illusion and uh, it really helps to realize it's a big illusion. And what we're dealing with is that it's a big program, which is old, can, consists of multiple pieces. Let, let me do a little deviation. So that's how I understand the flat earth theory, that the program was written largely in the times when um, when this humanity was so backward and uh, undeveloped that they didn't think big. They were thinking about local village things. So a lot of progr programming for that illusion was written in a flat, flat sort of environment. People didn't think about the planet. They were thinking about the village. And the village can easily be modulated with a flat earth mo modality, the flat earth model of the existence. So a lot of code for thousands of years was written with a flat earth model. But then after the humanity kind of stepped out of uh, villages and when navigations, navigation of ships around the earth started to happen, when astronomers started to de develop the telescope and remembered how to trace the stars and planets then, it made sense to modify the program and, um, you know, the programs, they started upgrading the programs to the round earth model, but they didn't cancel or mm, remove the old programs. So all the old programs are still there. And that's why people are so happy to remember that the flat earth was, was true for thousands of years. So that's my understanding. We are just living in the reality which was written by multiple programmers and uh, I mean the reality illusion which was written by multiple programmers and it has been uh, patched many times. And now that patched system is falling apart. It's not only the earth falling apart, the biosphere, but also the program of the illusion is falling apart. And the upgrade, which is ascension to the higher density, is um, is especially needed because of that in intrinsic troubles with the program. So why do we have so many souls ex incarnating at this time? Because this event, this transition, is the most interesting transition of uh, of through a long period of history. So everybody wants to participate. Also, uh, another explanation is that when the river uh, goes through, goes fast through a big, how do you say, um, slope, slope, high slope, then the river goes like with one straight stream. But if the slope becomes really flat and there is also some, how do you call it, the barrier, then the river becomes very fragmented in multiple, multiple streams like the um, Delta of Nile, right? You remember Delta of Nile has lots of lots of streams and they kind of intersect and they be, make a big swamp and uh, they go around. So that's what we have with the humanity. The tree of life, because of the blockage in development, was split in multiple souls, which are, many of them are very, sorry, there is electronic trouble here. Okay, I'm, I'm back. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, the, the, the tree of life, the energy flow was split because of the blockage in the development. So that's one of the reasons we got billions of souls, many of which are still playing the very rude, rudimentary, early stage development games of survival and um, deception and war. But um, when it straightens up, when their blockage is breaking and their, their game becomes more the movement forward is, is restored, then the river will become more 
uh, straightened and there will be faster flow but fewer branches and that's when the humanity I guess will will the, the numbers of people might become lower how do we lose them it's an interesting question but I, I refuse just to think about that it's just um, too depressing for me I don't, I don't really know it's it's not very interesting topic what I'm interested in what what can we do in a positive way to help the transition and reparation fixing healing the matrix he fixing fixing and healing the reality so that's that's the topic I wanted to raise well one way it to, to exp ex expand on that a little bit is not focusing on the let's say the the, the depopulation but understanding maybe what might enable that to happen informs you of how you're going to survive to what you need to do to survive which goes into the help right so my experience with survival in, in soviet union was um traumatic at that time but um not sort of useful so first thing that i noticed was that people didn't die from hunger uh in that situation we didn't have that it was the hunger was real real in 1930 1933 1934 that was when people died from hunger but in 90s there was no little food a little electricity little water little living conditions were terrible but people died from not being flexible enough not being able to uh, find the new ways of living Okay. new well, ideas why it is worth living what did you want to say i, I was just good that's why i brought up the, the the polarity and the radiation that you know it's people who have to find a way to adapt or to be able to tolerate more radiation if if that is one of the ways that's what that's why i brought that up um yeah i uh, my take now is you know i i'm much more believer of reincarnation now and uh some of the days are so depressing and boring that I don't even I'm not that excited about living that long, right? So it's it's worth, I guess, Me you know, too. just recalibrating your values, just not the mm -hmm. life for itself, but life for the betterment of their of their of the level of the game. Right. Uh, that's right. that's what I suggest. So really, right. don't worry as much about how you will survive. What you, right. more I, 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 how you can contribute to uh, bringing the game to the higher level because right. survival is going down like it's uh, go, like right now we are playing the games of um, I guess meditations hopes looking at the future looking at the past playing on a very high level we are helping the creator to transform the, mm -hmm. the, the, the game and then if it comes back to survival, it's just boring. Like the humanity was doing the survival game for thousands of years and it's just just not worth it. On the other hand, when uh, when their first blows to the Soviet Union system happened, when the television was off and uh, or was completely inadequate, there was no news, no social life. People didn't go to, you know, to visit friends because they were like scared. So we were locked. We were just locked in, in our apartment and there was shooting outside. That was actually mind blowing. It was very interesting. That was the quietness of that or living without electricity for a short while. It's scary, but on the other hand, like in the evening, just you, because electricity is sparse, you just live in the dark with, with candles. And that was uh, shifting, so much shifting the reality. The reality was in pockets and it wasn't as real anymore. Right now, because everybody plays the same game, it's very real. But now when the things start changing, everybody will play different games and you will see how imaginary it is, how illusionary it is. Like you, and at those times, again, you can uh, be in complete despair 
and in the same day you move to some place in vicinity of the person who projects uh, stability and you just return to normal or even to an elevated state like at that point uh, you know presence of prophets and people like Jim like just shiny people was was very influential we would run to these people and connect to them and speak on a very high level so so when lots of humanity goes down there will be simultaneously some of the humanity will go very high right now that highness that lifting of lifting high was is is restricted by consensus like you are played within consensus when consensus is destroyed then upliftment of the part of the humanity will become much more possible so my my suggestion is just stay high and uh, go with the ones which go high don't allow the ideas of just pure survival to drag you down you you do whatever is necessary but at the same time aim high i and i maybe i didn't mean to come across that way but my whole when i talk about that it's completely objective and looking at that big picture and wasn't even thinking about my own survival mm -hmm. because that's irrelevant <laughs> my for me as an individual whether or not i'm not focused on my survival at all mm -hmm. i'm just talking you know in general mm -hmm. um so i don't focus on you know i don't let that get me down it's that's whatever people will be will be and it's just a matter of like you said in order to obtain you know this cosmic event things have to happen and you know, you don't. I I don't let that get me done, because yes. it's all part of the plan. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm afraid there is very, very little understanding of the plan from any side. Like there is a plan, <laughs> what it is, I don't think. Um, I don't think we know. And I, our friends up there, they kind of also play by the ear. They don't really have a good plan. I think. Uh, I mean, they have parts of the plan. That's but, yeah, they they have parts of the right. plan. So they're waiting for the opportunity when we are transitioning pretty fast i think they will will give us some some sort of some sort of guidance and some sort of um yeah intervention but it looks like the intervention will be done through the humans as well so I, I call them outer humans and yes, i didn't know like with the, i didn't know like uh, with the practice of you know raising your vibration and getting your own vibration high enough you know to go into the to the fourth density and what effects that that has you know if if there's an evolution that's going to happen with humanity to raise to that level and that's the stepping point and and I didn't yeah. articulate that very uh -huh. well. It's, the hope I, it's, is hard that, to, it's hard to articulate some no, of this. No, the hope <laughs> is that when uh, the economy stops, the electricity might kind of go a little bit down, hopefully not too far. The, the chemtrails would go a little bit down. The poisoning with nonsense will go a little bit down. The poisoning with television will go down. There will be less coherence in that restriction. So when humanity is not restricted in... In development then we'll start developing with our normal pace i think right now the uh, the vibration of the humanity is artificially lowered through multiple means like alcohol tobacco co coffee poison food poison air poison water poison ele electromagnetic right. poison and when it's all right. disappears like when we go to uh, meditation places in the mountains or in the desert without electricity in a couple of days, we purify our vibrations and it just goes, goes up. It's just very fast. You can re release ourselves from that noise of the electronic poisoning. Got it. Got it. Understand. Uh huh. Eva, yeah. Yes. Hello. Hello. At this, at this Hi, it's Carol. Are you speaking? Oh, Eva, please speak. Okay. It's Carol. Oh, Carol, can you wait for Eva? Eva was lifting her hand. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. So, uh, at this time of the night, my energy level is very low, but I want to say something. All right. Uh, 
You know, I was thinking that um, about the free will and ascension, ascension and so on. You know, we, you, I, and probably everybody else here, we are actually those um, aliens who are, who are incarnated on this planet to raise the vibrations because my understanding is that um, that's the only legal, planetary legal way to help. And um, we, by raising the vibration, we also are changing um, life of this planet. And the more of us is here, the more we are tilting the vibration towards um, higher vibrational states, which means easier life. This means the shift would be also easier because it would be more energy of, of love, which is what we are here. I agree, all points made are perfect. So yes, we as hybrids and incarnated aliens, we serve as so I am not so worrying about my survival, actually, because I'm not here to think so much about my personal survival as transforming, helping planet Earth, you know, sure. like I, I have this enormous feeling of love towards planet Earth, which makes me think that my purpose here is basically to help. Why would I love, you know, this planet so much if, if it wouldn't be part of kind of my, let's call it mission, let's call it like this. But I also wanted to tell you about something when you talked about the Russia, why the Western world did not help. Because in the Western world, especially in United States, there is very, there is kind of... Um, brainwashing and a need of enemy mm -hmm. and Russia here is fulfilling for those people the the enemy role mm -hmm. it's, of course it's chosen and imaginary but that's what this western world is doing so they kind of could not run it help because they wanted to perceive Russia or, or, or Soviet Union, whatever stage, you know, the con however the country is called, as an enemy, which of course well, like, not. And, uh, and I think also it was a little bit, they deserve it. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like, that's their own punishment, they deserved it. Yeah, nobody deserves anything. Yeah, but we were like pro-Westerners. We were... Uh, right. I'm not saying you did. I'm just saying that was side, a mentality. But, but when, we, <laughs> when we came to the situation when we needed uh, advice, uh, it was silence. No, not complete silence, but it wasn't right. enough. Certainly not wasn't enough. Right. Like it was, right. And now we are ready. So where is the open door? Where Where is the welcome party? There was no welcome party. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Just transitioning that to... Um, what we and the U.S. does that a lot. Yeah, when what we expected <laughs> with uh, with the aliens, like finally we decide, okay, we have the disclosure. Hey, aliens, we are ready. Come here. And where is the you know the delegation? Uh, we are ready to become a part of a galaxy. Will they? Um, will they go with that? Hopefully, they you're will. getting a sound. You're getting a sound problem, Max. Um, I guess I need to mute someone to. Let, let's give a word to Carol. Hello, everyone. Hello. Well, I tell you, um, one thing that we are kind of like, when I saw, I just started with the crop circles. When my lady friend, she's about in her 70s, she's a Reiki healer, she showed me these uh, crop circles. And when I saw the crop circles, my soul just awoke in like at 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. I saw these crop circles as keys. Keys that were going to open portals on the earth mm -hmm. that will release 
uh, a lot of uh, light. As humans, I saw our goal was to give Mother Earth a lot of love. That is super, super important to uh, give gratitude for the birds, the animals, the plants, the trees, the shaded uh, grass, the sand, everything. And this is going to help uh, as uh, mass consciousness to help activate those keys because those keys, what they're going to do is activate crystals and the crystals are going to be activated. It's going to open portals. When we have uh, uh, meditated and uh, I've already had like three ascensions already. So, but they keep sending me back because they tell me I have things to tell others. And I'm always disappointed when they send me back. So I was really nice up there. <laughs> And um, and also because I was given a scepter and I had to learn what the scepter was about. And I also had dreams, visions of the Arctic water. I told my husband that, my ex-husband, 20 years ago that the Arctic ice, when it melts, is going to affect a lot of land and it is going to continue doing so. And um, I also had a vision of uh, divine goddesses showing me how, when, uh, if ever the earth, these crazy men start doing stuff there with the nuclear war and stuff, the portals are going to be open. And the ones that have uh, uh, raised their vibrations, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, will see these portals and be able to go through them. And um, I saw myself being captured by some men, government plan or whatever they have, which today is making more sense with the New World Order and the elites and the draconians and the cabals and whatever. And I put a fireman suit on because it, I saw a lot of fire. I saw a lot of um, uh, fireballs and bombs and whatever. And I had to try and grab a lot of people and tell them to not be afraid to jump through the window. And because the portal was open and when the portals are open, they told me that they're not going to be open for a long time. That when you see it, you decide you're going to wait. If you're going to wait, it's too, it's too late. You go through the portal when you see it. And you're going to be safe that way. I, I've had visions, many visions. Um, the, the, the earth, the water rising, uh, fireballs. I, I mean, I've seen the, a lot of scenarios. And I got to think... I know that we can all be also nice and blessed and loving, whatever, but we also have to be practical. I've always worked on gardening, learning how to preserve food, always having dry goods that you just need water to add and eat. Um, I've tried a very simple diet, try to live on it, see if I can survive. I've also, also fasted for like three days, five days, five days, and then 10 days just to know what it's like not to eat. And and I really enjoyed it by the, by the seven or eight day, I started seeing uh, spiritual light, light beings. And I asked them how come I'm seeing them is because they told me I'm not full of food, that I'm more spiritual energy now. So I can be at the same level as them. I was very, I was in my twenties, 21s when that happened. So for me, the goal that I see for the humans is to send a lot of love to Mother Earth, to envision uh, the rays, uh, you know, uh, when we see uh, rays coming out of her, um, th these rays that we see coming out of her are the keys from the, from the crop circles that are being activated. They're opening the portals and letting the light uh, come. And... Um, uh, so, and, and the more the keys are opening and the more the crystals are activated, the more she's going to ascend 
and be able to purify everything that is around us. And, and like the other gentleman said, the more we evolve and the more we see things and the more we are getting out of ignorance, the more the other side is starting to really sh show their colors of their evil plan for us. And um, it's, it's ever since I've been young, I, I remember being young, I was walking to school. Uh, home from school and I would I would look up above and I would see these big ships fighting with one another I've been on the past since and what the world is that is that for real and everything else today I'm, I'm going on 56 I watched I sh I've even wrote things I've, I've watched everything evolve change uh, um, some people that are stuck some people that do want to evolve and my question to the heavens all the time I even screamed at heavens said, hey, guys, if you guys really exist, show your face, do something, because I'm doing all the good that I can, and I always have to put up with the ones that aren't. How can I, how can I be spiritually involved? How can I get out of here? How can I, and it's like, you can't, you, you're, we are here as tools to help the others evolve and understand, and it's quite a task, but and it's not easy, but that is the way I have seen it all these years. And more and more exposures are coming out, more and more disclosures are coming out, and getting the people's spirit ready, and we are getting more and more help, because Mother Earth has no other choice but to ask for this help. She's the one that, we are our children, we are the ones living on her. She has no other choice but to ask for help to help balance from what the evil draconians have been doing to us for a long time. I came to Earth to live and to enjoy life, not to be burdened with money and survival and 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 be bashed by this other side. We are here to be harmonious and love each other, but we're all in just so much in such little groups everywhere. And what we are doing, as I've seen over the years, is we're coming more masked in a mass consciousness, more and more and more awake and becoming braver and braver to talk about these things and to share these things and not be ridiculed. Right. Carol, thank you. Let me grab the microphone. All you say, say is good. It just... Uh... Uh, you're just saying what I wanted to say. <laughs> uh, very good point about the portals. I mean, I guess that's um, that was a, a great challenge. I don't know if it can be circumvented somehow. So the question, if somebody tells you, jump into that portal, you say, why? You know, is it really? Will it close? Excuse me, but there will be a guide there. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There will be guides there. You're just not going to see a portal and just go through it. There will be guides there. They will... Um, you will you will know who they are because you will have some kind of some kind of feeling of affinity with them that you you've known them and, and you've been with them or have them before. But that's if you're but that's if you've personally ascended to, to a higher vibration, correct? You have to definitely be more vib uh, more healthy and but even then they're very compassionate and I've I've seen I've pulled some people that are that are elderly, elderly and, and, and not really in good shape, but their mentality and the love in their heart is what was the key that helped them see the, the portal. So there's, you know, we can't just judge, oh, well, well, you know, I, I'm high, you're low. It's, it's what's in your heart. Okay. It was just what you said said earlier about if you're attuned or if you have evolved to the higher vibration, you'll be able to see the well, portals, is what I thought you said. It's yeah, in your heart. Well, your heart is part of that. You, your, okay. Your heart is your, is a part of your um, building of ascension and love, which is right. a vibration. Got it. Got it. Okay, let me come back to the... Thank you. To the, I have to close soon. I wanted to... to Carol, I wanted to cover a few more topics before that but thank you for your contribution i think what you said was was good thank you um so i wanted to speak about 
just practical uh, things which we collectively can do as light workers down here below. Like after their series of big event starts. I don't know where from is that noise coming. Uh, let me mute everybody. Let's see if it helps. One, two, three, four, five. I think that helps. Um, so one, once this event starts, uh, first question will be whether to move. And that's a huge question. For, you know, for some people, it's very easy because their life, lo, lo, they're not tied much to the place and their life is kind of desperate anyway. So some people who are desperate can move very easily. But others who have um, connection, have uh, properties and stuff, for them it would be much harder to move. And uh, being aware that move, moving might be, might be needed is essential. So we are told many times that there will be time when the light workers will be guided and invited to move somewhere. Like maybe there will be camps or um, communes or just uh, relocated from one place to another. So be open and think about later you possibly wouldn't have enough time. So it's nice to prepare yourself and explore the idea of moving, migrating in advance and have your uh, plan what you take with you, ability to travel, passport, you know, simple things like cash, uh, packed. So when you need to, to move, so you, you will be ready. Because if, if you're not ready, then then um, you might miss the time time frame when it's when it's needed. And it can be short. Maybe you, you, can, you would have to move like in three days. There is uh, a wonderful story, not wonderful, I guess it's a scary story, when uh, Germans were approaching Vilnius, Vilnius, Lithuania, uh, close to Russia. It was uh, Baltic, northern part of Soviet Union. Actually, it was a separate country. It was just north of the border of, of Soviet Union. Uh, there were lots of Jews there, and uh, the life in uh, Lithuania was in, in Vilnius was wonderful, like European luxurious life with a lot of um, entertainment parties. Uh, so young men were and, and girls were uh, dancing, uh, had romance, and uh, so when uh, the Germans were close so they can hear the airplanes and bombs falling. So that was the time to decide who goes and who stays. And uh, some people just didn't realize that Germans were that dangerous for Jews. But especially uh, because the Jews in Latvia spoke the dialect of German. So Germans for them much, were much closer in language than Lat Lithuanians or, or Russians. So running away from them just took some understanding that <clears throat> that uh, Hitler had a plan to to destroy all the, all the all the Jewish population and all the Jews will be killed so that was unclear it was there were rumors there were clear uh, reports in newspapers but it, the genocide didn't start at that high level yet so it was I guess part of intuition and research what will happen later uh, so the families of Jews they um, just said we can't run it fast, but some would uh, go on horse uh, horse carriages. Some would go on uh, on uh, motor cars, and uh, there was a group of young people who just took their bicycle. They were like 16, 17 years old, and took their bicycles. And on bicycles, uh, five five people went to Russia, and their friend didn't go because he had a date. He couldn't go on that time. He had a date. So he didn't survive. And uh, some older people who couldn't move, they, they, but many people went. And uh, part of my, my relatives, uh, they, they say, were saved by, through that. And uh, in one family, they, they packed a lot of things in the car, but uh, at the last moment, they forgot the uh, case with documents. So that gave them a lot of trouble on the way to, to Russia. And, and away from Germans, but they, they were able to pass through. So these young people, they got on bicycles and they ran to, uh, uh, they 
took bicycles to the Russian border. It took like a few days to, to get there. And then, uh, and then Russia didn't let them in because Russia was, uh, they didn't have visas, they didn't have passports for, for the tr tr going through the border. And they were also shot by locals, uh, anti-Semites, they were shot um, from the bushes, like local peasants were, were uh, shooting at, uh, at Jews running away. And finally, when uh, the Germans came from other side, Russian border patrol, they just ran away too. So the border be le were left without the protection. So they were able to sneak sneak in and then th they were saved. They, uh, they survived and uh, did normally after that in Russia. And the left, the ones who left, they all perished. So sometimes you have like clear indication it's time to go and you have to decide like quick in a day or two or three. So being prepared and being informed is great, is important. Uh, now, our next topic is what, um, what should light workers do? And uh, my claim is we should do exactly what we are doing now. We should uh, do broadcasting. But I guess uh, after their events, there will be huge noise. On one hand, the mass, we, mass media might be losing the, the respect from people because of they are not as well equipped to report real news. They kind of report fake news, but for real news, they might be not as good, especially if there will be a censorship and uh, how do you call it? The deception, then people start, might start questioning what they hear on the mass media and then look for alternative media. And we are the alternative media. And I asked aliens, you know, how, you know, will the internet be there? Will the cell phones be there? And uh, most of the prediction is that, yes, the internet and the cell phones will still exist because that's the critical thing for broadcast. Otherwise, we would have to have a radio transmitter, which is not impossible to get, but, you know, I didn't get it yet. But I guess in the last moment, we can go to Radio Shack and see if we can buy a radio transmitter or order it on Amazon. That would Matt? be fun. Yes. Um, one thing that uh, uh, Yogananda and Babaji has told me is that uh, uh, when these things happen, um, they will give you um, a very clear uh, message in your sleep. Uh -huh. Be very attentive. Um, I are and uh, Babaji has tested me a few times to see uh, if I'm if I were, if, if this message was going to go through me and uh, to warn me of a certain event and to watch for it and and when I waited two three days and the event did happen so he told me that that's good uh, he said so if ever there are going to be events you can announce to others to pay attention if they don't have internet or phone or anything like that, uh, don't forget you are a transmitter yourself and to um, be conscious uh, and to um, know your guides. If you don't know them, you will. They will come into your um, conscious mind and dream and they will talk to you for a while until you really, um, what can you say? You really um, get it. Get it. And when they feel that you have gotten it and that you're clear on it, then they uh, give you a blessing. And when you awake, you don't forget it. Believe me, you yep. have it with you. Yeah, so we have, we have to... Uh, let me mute you again because there is a neck. Uh, yes, we have to work on our uh, telepathy and uh, psychic abilities, ability to get a message. Like yesterday I had... Uh, uh, I was sent an invitation, somebody sent me an invitation to get for a certain event. And I felt like I'm sick, I'm tired, I don't have time, I don't have enough money for that event, so I shouldn't go. So I sent a message, I will not go. And in the morning I woke up with clear understanding that I got to go. Like it was just check mark. It was in my delivered to me, I, I got to go. So I'm open my, opening my cell phone to send a message. No, I changed my mind. I, I, I will go. And I see that my previous message was blocked. It didn't send. wasn't sent out. And it happens to me like now every day. They censor what I'm writing, censor what I'm uh, sending. 
and uh, the guys are helping me with, uh, with planning really well. Like if I'm late to something, they will make sure I uh, I wake up in the proper time and get a message that it's time to go somewhere. So there is a lot of guidance, yes. And um, of course, yeah, plan for having no cell phone, no internet, and rely only on inner guidance. Like in uh, in Soviet Union, lots of not everybody, but lots of people of our kind were trained really well to survive on inner guidance. Like you go on the street and you have a feeling now you shouldn't go any farther. You just have to take a big way around, spend an extra half an hour, an hour to walk around, but don't go straight. And you don't ask any questions. You just have that feeling of survival and you've been guided just to go around and you trust that it wasn't safe to go there. Uh, for me, it was like many times in a week I would just stop, get the message and go around or turn around or change my change my decision, change my planning just because I got in their safety messages. All right, so broadcasts. Um, in Russia, it was absolutely essential, the broadcasts. It was done mostly by Radio Liberty, which was the same Soviet uh, immigrants who ran away from, this, uh, from the system and were hired by uh, American-sponsored uh, radio, and they were broadcasting back the truth. And that, that signal was running mostly like 24 hours a day, or much of that time. And that voice was, in all people who were awakened, that voice was biggest part of their life. And we are missing it now because it was very specific tone of compassion, which was very new to us. And also it was, um, how do you call it? Uh, there was uh, noise projected by radio blockers, by Soviet blockers, so there was like, uh, whistles and uh, white noise which they broadcasted to block that that transmission so that was also a huge part of many years of you know brightest years of our life so now we are missing that noise too so when we hear the recording of that of this broadcast with that noise it's it's very specific interesting um, uh, awakening and remembering remembrance so uh, what do we what are we going to broadcast? About the same thing as we have now, but we, I, I'm sure we'll have more information. So there will be very important things to broadcast, and part of that we can do from our home, but I think by that time we'll have uh, centers where we'll be do broadcasting. I think some of the centers will be down on the surface, and some of them will be out there. So that's my proposals and hope that's, I guess, my main message to the to the aliens and uh, outer humans. Uh, let's prepare the broadcasts. And the broadcasts have to be primarily done by humans, because humans trust humans much more than to aliens. So we, the humans and outer humans, should um, speak in human language and tell, tell our knowledge, our experience. And interviews with aliens done by humans would be great. So we should do lots of interviews with the aliens out there and, uh, and broadcast it down. I think that would be the most important thing. So that should be, that will be, there will be hunger for that. The first period of time when the humanity awakens to their understanding that there are aliens out there, this kind of information has to be already prepared and uh, we have already we know the questions, right? You know what? What the main question is: What is their agenda? Why are, are they here? And what do they offer? And can we trust them? So these are the main, again, the one main question. And um, and the, the second question is: How is life out there? And what can we learn from there? How can we transform our reality, knowing what's out there? And basically, prepare the Earth for becoming a citizen of the galaxy. And then um, after the broadcast, the, there is the main question is how do we rebuild the economy? And my understanding, some sort of unit of economical unit needs to be built. 
and um, my understanding is possibly this units already exist on Earth, and we should look at the monasteries, missions like uh, Christian missions. Some, I guess, Christianity is most known for missions, right? Christian missions and franchises like um, franchises of different businesses. How they clone a good models of of new life. Um, this model that that unit of new life should be a relatively small relatively big a group of people that have common common ground common uh, interests and um, the main critical thing is how to uh, prevent deception prevent uh, negative from hijacking those units so we need some sort of spiritual leaders which or telepathic aliens who can help us to see through the leadership and to help with it. Like we did um, an experiment some time ago, I think it was two and a half years ago, when we tried to create such unit in human colony, just some sort of democratic, democratic elections and volunteers running the system. And um, all people had positive intentions, I'm sure, but there was so much discordance that I had to close it down. It was just self-destructive mechanism, basically. People going without coherence, without talking to each other, people going in opposite directions, breaking, uh, breaking and destroying the 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 process. So, so I guess the structure is needed. It's not a flat structure. It should be structured more or less flat plus hierarchically but my understanding is that the new structures i guess alien pleiadian it's more like orion versus pleiadian model of uh, economy and society orion is hierarchical based on dominance and pleiadian is um rainforest type of horizontal structure where you have elders and you have leaders but each person is a leader in their own area, and they uh, cooperate. So we have all this, all this kind of structures already here down on Earth, but they are, I guess, repressed by, by the old system. So when the system falls apart, there will be plenty of freedom to create those structures. And uh, I hope they will have guidance and help with building the structures, but. That would be the the next message we'll have to broadcast and share how to build those structures and how to help them evolve. The new system of Earth, we, which is based on, I guess, on the spirit psychic work and uh, and um, heart heart cohesion, heart coherence. When people come together based on on common vibration. So I guess that's that's the main message I wanted to deliver today, and uh, it's time to wrap up. Any more questions before we close? Well, I can say if this happens, I'm going to go where the Indians are. <laughs> I'm going to go live with Indians. They know how to survive. Indians, Hindu Indians or American Indians? No, Indians. My my Canadian Indians. My um. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. They know how to survive, and sure. I think I, you know, I, I keep asking my guides, "Is that what I should do?" And many times, I they laugh and say, "Yeah, probably uh, if they accept the white woman." But I think today okay. is more acceptable. <laughs> Alicia, Jan, or Eva, do you have any closing comments? Um, I guess maybe I have a a, a question or how I could go about doing something and that is. You know, I really enjoy these conversations, and there are times when we're not having these meetings, you know, other times during the weeks, I would really like to have a discussion with someone about something specific or, you know, you get excited about something and want to talk. And I would like to be able to, you know, communicate with individual members one on one. What would be a way to find other members that are just, you know, also yeah, hanging out and willing to that's talk? That's easy. So uh, we have uh, three major platforms. 
and I intentionally keep that separate uh, diff different platforms. One is Skype, Got one it. is um, uh, Google Hangouts chat, Google Hangout okay. chat box, and another one is Facebook. So if one right. of the platforms deletes or clo breaks our system, we have backup. And even if all three of them break, we'll, we'll still be able to collect the members just okay. by a unique Hucle award or a few other like Human Colony or Jim Charles. You okay. will be able to recreate it very easily on on, on other platforms. But okay. the key... I didn't know if it was appropriate or not, whether or not, like I was thinking about one on the Facebook page and said, hey, was anyone interested in talking yeah. this afternoon? Just Skype me. Yeah. Um, so uh, all, all of those places are, are you can find them on uh, hucola.org. Hucola right. Click on jump. I'm on and jump page on the top, top of jump page are listed all places where we are meeting. Right. And um, the, the easiest, I guess, is either Skype group or the Facebook group and you just uh, uh, do it there but once you got your initial members I don't have to go to full full blown I think we have now thousand members or something on Facebook you don't have to post it on 2000 you can just target a few of them either through Skype or through Facebook uh, okay. messenger Facebook messenger I think is most popular these days. So Facebook Messenger okay. is great. I'm I'm on all of those, and I just I just wanted I just wanted to make sure that it would be appropriate for me to do that to initiate. Yeah, something and, like and that. also invite people just to connect one on one on on phone, like just old style phone conversation is great. I have okay. a suggestion. <laughs> yes. I have a suggestion. So, uh, on the day that you want to speak to someone, you might want to open up a subject to know what you want to talk about and the one that has knowledge about that particular topic they will definitely contact you talk to you honey okay thank you i'm new to the group so you know so i didn't know exactly it's, it's like a beach <laughs> we we have um uh, jim i and a few people helpers we call them founders uh we kind of stick together and produce webinars but there is a lot of people coming and going like on the beach we don't even know who they are they kind of show up a little bit and then they Right. Disappear. So it's it's a very open uh, structure. Eva, right. did you okay. want to say something? Oh, I was gonna say. Um, so like, if Ian would start a um, a Google Hangout and then post the link in the Hukulo free uh, Facebook group to get people to join and whatever he wants to talk about, is that okay? Oh yeah, Hangouts are great, and uh, Zoom on Zoom you can um, okay. easily meet on Zoom. Uh, it's free, up to forty minutes. It's free, and then you. If you need to record 40 minutes, then you have to stop and start over. But otherwise, it's 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 very easy. Right. Okay. Uh, Alicia. Yeah. Yay. Yep. <laughs> that, I mean, that's what I was that's what I was asking. So, ah. so it's all good because, like, I, um, yeah, I like to discuss things. I like, you know, if if we don't have something like that's why I like to hang out with you guys on Thursday because otherwise I'm really busy. But um. I like to watch what's going on in the groups, but I don't really comment much because I would rather just do it face to face because I, I like being able to see the other person. I get more off of them. I can read more off of them than yes, you know, on Facebook. So yeah, I miss your yeah. face too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So um, actually, there are a few people who are still doing that. You know, uh, I, I, I'm, uh, Sabri Sabrina is the key person who is doing that most of the time. She is. Uh, She's doing the galactic people. stuff, right? She's recording the galactic stuff, but she yeah. talk, talks off record to many people and keep keeps track okay. of them. And um, oh yeah, we had a conversation off record. She's really cool, Ian. So if you have like galactic uh, questions and stuff, she was really helpful. Uh huh. All right, yep. thank you guys. Anything else before we close? Thank you. I think that's it. All right, nice meeting night. everybody. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, Bye. The announcements. Tomorrow we don't have a class, and uh, because we have something else on um, uh, Saturday. Saturday, Jim is doing the webinar. Karen is uh, hosting, and I will help to start it. And uh, next Tuesday, as usual, I plan my Yoganada channeling, and next Thursday evening I do my um, talking for myself. All right. Good night. Good night, everyone.
Wonderful. Good night, everyone. Thank you.